Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at the highly anticipated 60% offering from Glorious PC Gaming Race, the GMMK Compact. Now, for transparency, Glorious did send this unit out for review, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. All right, so before we get into specifics of this board, let's talk a little bit about price structure and how this works in the event that you're new to Glorious PC Gaming Race. For just under $110, you can get this board in a pre-built configuration that's going to come with God around brown switches and double shot ABS keycaps in black. Or you can order it bare bones with no switches and no keycaps for just under 60 bucks. Or you can start with a bare bones board and then add switches, which come in packs of 120 for between 30 and 35, depending on which flavor of Gateron or Kale switches you go with. There's no Cherry MX over here. Then you can also choose to add keycaps for $20 for double shot ABS white or black, or for 25, you can upgrade to double shot PBT pudding caps, or what they call the Aura keycaps. So even if you load this guy up with the highest end configuration they have available, the most you're gonna pay for this thing is just under 120 bucks. I guess one of the bigger things I need to point out here before we really get rolling is that this board is nearly identical in terms of features and design language to the existing GMMK models, with the exception that it's obviously 60%. So if you're familiar with their lineup already, you know exactly what you're gonna be getting here. So this board, much like the Poker 3 RGB we looked at recently, makes a really strong first impression impression. It weighs in at 788 grams, and this thing feels like it's built really tough. It measures 100 millimeters by 209 millimeters, and by default, the height at the top row is about 43 millimeters tall. Unlike the Poker 3 RGB and the Ant Pro 2, it does have flip-down feet, though you only get one level of adjustment, unlike the Ducky 1 Too Many, where you get two. Also, in the bottom of the keyboard, you have storage for your keycap puller, which is pretty slick. Outside of that, you have four convex rubber feet. You'll get extras of these feet inside the box, along with the switch puller and a plastic dust cover. We've got a detachable cable here as well, which is stiff, thick, braided, and it's mini USB. That's unfortunate because I'm sure a lot of you were looking for USB-C on this board, so it's probably going to lose some points there. You do get this 90 degree adapter though, which I've never seen before. This is a floating switch design here as well, so similar to the Vortex in that it doesn't have any bezels, but unlike that board, it's using a milled aluminum top plate. It's got a beveled edge around the outside that's reflective, looks pretty cool, but unlike all its competitors, the top plate here is black as opposed to white, so it's going to give you a more stealth look, but it's going to come at the expense of being able to reflect that RGB RGB light off the keybed. Even looking straight down into this board, you get virtually no light coming up from in between the keys. Instead, you see it reflected on the sides of the keycaps and of course coming up through the legends themselves. This is a decidedly more adult approach to RGB lighting, similar to the vibe you get from like a Logitech G Pro TKL. Whether or not that appeals to you is going to be a matter of personal taste. You do get tons and tons of modes and animations and you can control the direction and the speed of each of these. So these keycaps, these are double shot ABS, not PBT. These are really slick and really smooth, especially coming from the very textured PBT keycaps on the Mass Drop Alt that I've been using a lot recently. There are some spots in the double shot mold that cause some inconsistencies in the shine through. This is really apparent on my inner key where it looks like little water droplets almost behind the characters. The font is stylized and chunky with some disconnected characters. It's not going to be for everyone. You do get a couple of really cool custom keycaps included here as well, namely this all red ascend key for your escape key and the shine through glorious logo for your left windows key. It's awesome. They did include standard versions of both these keys in the box as well, just in case you hate fun. The stabilizers here are better than the Poker 3. They're better than the Mass Drop Alt. They're pretty much on par with the AM Pro 2, and they fall just short of the one too many. So the big reveal for this board, and all glorious boards for that matter, is that not only can you change your keycaps, you can change your switches. With the included puller, you can literally just take the keycap off and then pop switches in and out wherever you want to, whenever you want to. You don't even have to unplug the keyboard to do it. They're all hot swappable. In terms of customization, this gives the compact the edge over pretty much anything else out there, with the exception of the Mass Drop Alt, which also has this feature, but which is also technically a 65% board. So if you're really not sure what switch you like, you can play the field. For 15 bucks, Glorious will sell you a demo box of all the Gateron and all the Kale switches that they offer. Just ready for something new? You can redo the entire field of your keyboard for like 30 bucks. You want just your Waz keys to have a completely different switch from the rest of your board? Totally fine. And this board is completely compatible with Cherry MX switches as well, so feel free to go that way if you like. I tested my Cherry MX Browns and they fit this board perfect. But as I said, the pre-configured board comes with Gateron on browns. This is my first time using these and I can tell you these feel a lot smoother to me than the MX browns. Also opted to grab a set of Kale Box Whites because I'd heard a lot about them and I've got to say these are awesome switches. Very smooth, very clicky. I like them better than MX Blues as well. 
So the GMMK software will handle macros as well as customizing and lighting. This board is similar to the Ducky in that actually remapping the keyboard is very limited. The only real baked in functional shortcuts here are the ability to lock the Windows key and the ability to move the function key to the caps lock and back. There's a little LED that sits just to the left of the caps lock that lights up a different color depending on which one of these modes you have activated. This means like the one too many, your arrow keys are going to be limited to either function or caps lock and IJKL. I did punch up a quick auto hotkey script that'll give you that tap functionality for your arrow keys on your right shift cluster, similar to the one I did for the one too many. I'll link it in the description below. To use it, just make sure that you have your function assigned to your caps lock key and then unplug and replug the board after you get everything situated and that should smooth out any issues with the apps key. So wrapping up here, this board finds itself in a unique place in the market. At $120, it's notably cheaper than the mass drop all. It's still $20 north of the one too many and it's considerably more expensive than the Amp Pro 2. For that price premium, you get one major W. Obviously, that's the ability to swap switches. And this thing is positively built like a tank. I thoroughly enjoy it for both typing and gaming. And as far as looks and lighting go, a lot of that's going to be personal taste, but it does not have that big saturated RGB that we see on the one too many or even the Vortex. Unfortunately, it's not really feasible for me to test longevity of the product in these videos, and I do have to wonder how many times you can pull a switch in and out of this board before those contacts start to get a little janky, but that would be a concern for me on any board that had this functionality. So, final recommendation, buy this board if you plan on playing the field for switches. It makes an awesome gateway if you've ever wanted to experiment with different switch types, but you've been uneasy to because it usually means buying a completely different new keyboard. When you start to experiment with different switch types, the subtleties really become apparent a lot faster than you think they would. This board makes an excellent platform for this. I can tell you from personal experience it has completely changed my opinion on switches. I'll save that for a different video, but you owe it to yourself to experiment. You might wind up finding a favorite switch that you never expected. Big thanks to Glorious PC Gaming Race for sending this out for review. Side note, they also sent me out this little wrist rest here, which I would not have bought on my own accord. It's like 20 bucks. I love this thing. I'm going to be using this on every keyboard I use from now on. I will leave affiliate links in the description below if you'd like to get your hands on anything that we talked about in today's video. <laughs> Today's setup flex comes from Iconic Mods. His very custom system is running a Ryzen 7 1700X at 3.9 GHz, 16 GB of Trident Z RGB RAM, and an XFX Vega 64 GPU. His main panel is a 34-inch LG ultra-wide 1080p 144 Hz. He's playing on mainly Corsair peripherals, the Scimitar Pro and the K95 with the Razer Goliath as Chroma extended mouse pad and an Astro A50 for audio. He's also been hard at work building up his tech review channel over on YouTube, so definitely stop through and show him some love. Really an impressive setup, man. Thanks so much for submitting. If you'd like to be featured on a future set of Flex, check the card in the corner for details. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.